All right. Music producers, if you only knew what the last 45 minutes has consisted of <laughs> in trying to get this dialogue <laughs> to you, um, I need to check out the chat to make sure that we're actually A1 in terms of conversation and you guys can actually hear us and see us. I think hearing us is more important. Even if I have to re-upload this video, I'll do that. But uh, I'm here joined by a special guest, my buddy Larry O., uh, who we just put together a course that a lot of you guys know about, which is the Advanced FL Studio course that we are calling Flow. First and foremost, how you doing, Larry? How you doing, man? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm great. How about you? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. I, I don't see anybody. In, oh, there we go. Okay. I was, I was concerned about this chat, man. I was like, oh, that, that tells us whether we're live or not. And then, of course, here comes the replay. Let me turn that down. Okay. Buffo on the beat. What's the deal? Cami boy. Um, myth, I think myth, Mythilia. I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. Charge Anderson, what's the deal? Um, you hear us loud and clear. The video might be a bit choppy. Uh, great keys, my brother. How you doing? Uh, the video might be a little choppy because OBS just had a new update, and good God, it's been causing us issues this morning. But we're so glad to see you in here, so glad to share your presence and answer your questions today. Uh, but first and foremost, man, I Larry, bro, how you doing? I'm good, bro. I'm great. Uh, you know, living the dream. I, saw, I hear it, bro. <laughs> I hear it. Produced by Pac. What's good with you, bro? Uh, Jake B. C. Music. Tony with the keys. So, uh, Rich Hunter, uh, Aaron Barber, my brother. So, today, we here, We are here at your disposal. Like, we're not here to just to be ranting and talking. I mean, that's usually me. That's not him. This guy over here is so freaking informative. If you don't know about Larry O, oh my gosh, like if you don't know <laughs> about him and you're on Instagram, do me a favor. Go to Instagram now. The same way it's Larry O, but with two H's. How y'all forget that I got two S's? Don't forget he has two H's. And we both <laughs> have beards and we might be related. We haven't confirmed it, but we might be related. <laughs> but he it's a pleasure to have this gentleman here because of how informative he is. Uh, if you don't know, if you do know, you already know what's up. You know, I'm not putting extras on this. Uh, but if you don't know, go check out his YouTube. Go check out his tutorials. There's so many things that I have learned through working with him that um, I was so grateful to be able to put this course together. And we put together a 12-hour course, 44 lessons together. Uh, and how long, bro? It wasn't that long that we took it to put it together. No, I mean, we, we talked about it for like maybe a month. And then when we really got down to it, I mean, as far as outlining it and getting it together, I mean, we put a decent amount of work into it, you know, really focused work. But as far as filming it, it didn't take me too long. Um, I'm sure it didn't take you that long either. You know, the outlining was the best part of this, the organization, which, Absolutely. you know, we were on IG Live talking about organization and, and that sort of thing. And I mean, we really like uh, I think I followed your lead on that, man, because I think you're a lot more organized than I am. And it really helped with this whole process, I think. That's why this whole process man, was just such a pleasure and so easy for me to, to work with. It was just really smooth. Um, really just took us like, what, maybe a few weeks to get it from, from like the starting point where we did the outline to right. the final product, maybe right. like a month altogether. Yeah. So and, and, and if for people who are curious about it, the, the URL at the bottom, the URL at the bottom is to get you into a private Zoom call. Like we're having a, a Zoom meeting like right now, me and Larry o are using Zoom to talk to you guys. But we want to be able to see you and be able to let you see our screens in a private Zoom meeting on Thursday. We did it last week. And actually, if you go to that link, what you're going to see is the last week's meeting. And you get that for free. So I'm pretty sure there's answers, there's questions in there that you probably have. You're just gonna get that for free. That's not even not even it's not even there's nothing to sell in there. It's just a matter of we want to make sure that we continue to give you value, especially if you're a producer that is somewhat familiar with FL Studio, or maybe you are you're at an intermediate level and you're looking to go to that next level. I guarantee you, between the stuff that I know, between the stuff that this guy knows, and what we were able to put into this course. And still add to this course, because every time we answer questions that we feel like, yo, that would be good to add, we add it to the course. And uh, it's just, it's amazing to see how many producers be giving us such positive feedback. So, uh, yeah. yeah, man. So I, I want to keep this going. I want to keep this going. Um, so that being said, 
if uh, this is the time to start asking any FL Studio questions you have, even music production questions. Uh, obviously, we have an advanced FL Studio course. If you want to go ahead and check that out, just get rid of that Zoom link at the bottom and just put advancedflstudio.com if you already want to go straight to the course. But we want to show you the value that we can give you first before we even think about telling you to come invest into the course. We need to give you value, and that is that should be the the norm. But I can't wait to get at some of these questions. Thank you, Larry, for inviting me over to your Instagram this morning and uh, being able sure. to answer questions with you. It was it was it was definitely a pleasure. Pleasure's here, man. You know, it's always it's always good bouncing off of somebody else in, in those in live streams. And you know, there was a lot of questions coming in, and anything that I felt you you were better at, you know, what I mean, you could take the lead on that. We can answer a lot more questions like that. So I think. You know, thank you for having me on your YouTube channel as well, because I think we're going to be able to answer a lot of people's questions. You know, facts, facts. I'm, it's, 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 I'm, I'm appreciating seeing so many people showing love and they're like, oh, that's so great that y'all here. But we wait. We ready for them questions. Bring them questions on. We waiting for the questions. Bring the questions, um, especially if they're FL Studio related. I think you'll find a lot of value in it. But um, yeah, shoot your questions. I think maybe there might be a little bit of a delay, which is uh, I mean, that's just the Internet sometimes. But Shoot us the questions and we'll go into it. Uh, so I guess we can talk about a little bit about what the course covers until we start getting these questions. Uh, is the course for beginners? In your opinion, um, in my opinion, it's a little it's more advanced than uh, than it is for beginners. I think if you're just just getting into FL Studio, I suggest you getting uh, Curtis King's uh, beginner course. You know, if you've been doing it for a while and you, you've been making beats in there for a while. And you feel like you have a good grasp on the basics, and you're maybe a little bit more intermediate. I think it's definitely time to go into that advanced uh, learning on FL Studio, which we cover a lot of in this in this course. You know, a lot, a lot more advanced stuff in this course. Okay, so I got a few questions that already just popped up right now. How do you think beats should basically be structured? I'm gonna let you answer that one first, my good sir. Uh, you know, it depends what kind of beats you're making. You know, so if you're making trap beats, hip hop beats, it's pretty basic. It's act, it's really basic because I've done, you know, I've, my background comes from uh, a lot of different genres. I've done um, metal hip hop music, uh, just regular hip hop stuff, uh, EDM hip hop stuff. So the structures vary from genre to genre. So if you're talking about like hip hop genres, it's really basic. It's like intro, drop into a verse or a hook, then et cetera, et cetera, verse, hook, verse, hook, and so on throughout the entire beat. Uh, sometimes, you know, there's a drop off where there's um, a pre-chorus or a breakdown of some sort. You know, maybe you do that after the chorus, but for the most part, it's intro, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, verse, outro, something like that, depending on how many verses you have. EDM, it's a little bit different. You want to go intro, maybe go into a verse, go into a build up, breakdown, and then uh, into a drop. And then, you know, continue on. You have a little B section there. So it really depends on genre to genre. Hopefully I answered that for you. Okay, and I'm I'm collecting questions as we go. I'm sorry, my son just walked in right now. You already know, father to father, <laughs> when, when they come in, you shut a day. Like, they don't yep. care about nothing. Nas does not care about none um, of this. He's like, bro, structure beats. My son doesn't have... care. My son does not care about phone calls. My son will, you know, he wants that attention. He doesn't care about phone calls, nothing, bro. Rightfully so. But um, uh, just to kind of, I mean, you, you, you nailed that in terms of structure and it depends on what genre or what, what you're trying to do. But you, you guys know me, I'm, I, I kind of, it's more of an emotional uh, uh, connection with it. You're, you are, you already innately know what to, what the next part of this beat should be. And if you listen to it and your ears are not fatigued and you're not too focused on things that are outside of the, how does this music make me feel? you'll know when something's been dragging on for too long. And if you don't know, it'll just take some time. I think it'll come to you. But in terms of structure, you know, you, you're you able to listen to music and know when a, a chorus is coming up and you have no idea why. It's not because you're counting yep. bars. Without even knowing what bars are, you almost know, like, something, something, some part of the music left. And then something's getting ready to come back in. So uh, I think l more important than structure, because you want to know the rules to break them, is... What does the music feel like? What is the story or the journey of this music seems like it needs to go to next? I think it's an important question also. Definitely. Uh, so it's a vibe. You got to feel it out. For sure. Okay, so another question is, do you guys do you guys clip 808s and kicks inside the plug-in tab? 
and boost or do you use soft clipper or et cetera on the master track? Um, you could do both, honestly, if you have samples that have already had that done to them. I think this is where um, a lot of producers might get confused. A lot of times, if you're getting samples from high quality producers and sound designers, like slap experts, cymatics, hey, et cetera, hey. you, can, um, you can probably guarantee that they've already been clipped somewhat. They've been pushed to their limit. Mm -hmm. If you feel the need to do it a little bit more, do it a little bit more. If you're sound designing yourself, then um, clipping and boosting is, is a good option. A lot of times I just use the sampler inside of FL Studio. I'll just go to pre-computed effects. They have that new tab in there where you can just give it a boost and you can turn the clipping on so it clips it just a little bit. Or you could use Soft Clipper on the 808 mixer channel itself. You could do that too. Yeah. Uh, I mean, for me, I mean, I, I tend to – like. I feel like over the years I've tend to simplify things and use the stock sounds and the stock plugins even more to get what I'm trying to get accomplished. And what I've started to learn is the reason why these DAWs are so expensive are they're so, you know, they're hundreds of hundreds of dollars is because there's so many features in there that we don't tap into because they're not the, the they're not the cool plugins to talk about. Like if it's not gross beats or the things that everybody's like kind of knows about already, um, it becomes something where it's like it's not the focus, but a lot of these plugins that maybe their interface or the, the the skin doesn't look that up to date, they do some really powerful things that we can still utilize. For instance, Harmer, being able to take a one shot and insert it right into Harmer. Harmer is a part of your FL Studio, depending on which one you got. You put a one shot, a melodic one shot, and you can play it up and down your keys without shaping it. You can add reverb to it. You can actually do like some EQing within Harmer without even touching the, the mixer, but it, I think it comes to, for me... Harmer is slept on. So slept on, uh, to the point Harmer where the, the FL Studio that I had, bro, I went and bought, I had to go buy that version. I had to go buy the upgrade to get the other one because it was that important yeah. for me to have that. Now, in terms of the clips and the 808s, like, I put the soft clipper on my master channel, and I don't apply it again to the kicks and the 808s. For the 808s and the kicks, what I'm trying to figure out is... How do I uh, 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 move certain knobs around in order to get the feeling that I want? So for the 808s, it depends on what device I think things are going to be heard through. Like, for instance, for a beat battle, I want the middle of the 808s to be heard because phones it can only pick up. Uh, when you're listening on a phone, you're only hearing the bass frequency, I think, from like 50 or 60 hertz up. So you'll have yeah. a subby bass that if, if the phone's not vibrating, you won't even know that it's there. Uh, so up to like 60, 70, 80, 90, you start to hear some of those other uh, sub harmonics within the 808. And so I think it's really important to uh, experiment with things like our bass that allow you to kind of like uh, sweep the knob back and forth to see where you want I this love 808 to heat. Man, I love our bass. Our bass bro. But then also, you know, and, and if bass, people don't have it. Yeah, ba Go boost ahead. bass, right? Yeah, I was just going to say. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Nah, you were going there too. <laughs> yeah, you don't have, because our base, for people that don't know, our base is a Waves plugin. So third party, you'd have to buy it. If you don't have the money to buy the bundles or just the individual plugin, uh, Fruity Bass Boost does basically the same exact thing. It just finds certain frequency that you like and it boosts it. You know, that's Fire. really all it does. Uh, monitors that are better than head okay are monitors better than headphones for mixing what do you think larry i think it's subjective i think it depends on the person for me personally i like mixing on my monitors but i found that i've been doing some things at home here and there and i'm starting to like headphones a little bit too you know as far as mixing a final product i would i would reference them on three to four different devices Fact. reference them on a pair of monitors that you have that you use all the time obviously a pair of headphones that you listen to music on all the time Reference them, not just on a pair of headphones that, you know, you've had sitting and you don't use them at all because you're not used to how they sound. You don't know what the what a, another mix sounds like in those headphones. So the headphones that you use on a day to day basis, AirPods, reference your mix in the AirPods. If you can hook it up in a certain way, mix with the AirPods. Mm. I don't know if it's, if it's doable. It might be doable where I literally uh, not right now, but in my headphone jack, I have my old iPhone uh like uh, earbuds that are plugged into my um, output headphone output on my on my uh, monitor station, to where I can reference them in my headphones right there, right in the and, and actually mix with those headphones. 
Yeah. You know, so I'm used to those kind of headphones when I'm out doing what I got to do or if I'm at home. So it's a good idea to reference on different devices. Facts. And really, I think it's subjective. There's nothing that's better than another. I know people that make great sounding mixes on just headphones or just yeah. monitors. So it, it depends, you know, I like referencing on a few different things for a final mix. Yeah. And, and, and two things I got to say with that, and I'll keep it short because you nailed it all the way, all the way. One is I, I heard one time Eminem talk about something he learned from Dre and that Eminem owns, I think it's a Monte Carlo or a, 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 a car that has like really great stock sound. And he keeps that car specifically to run mixes through that so that he can get the experience of somebody who's a fan of his who just has their stock sound in the car and they're able to listen to it and how to go, you say, A, B, test it and say, okay, this is how it sound here. Then he goes and buys a, the cheapest pair of headphones he can find like at the 99 cent store and then sees what do I get from this experience? And then he'll take, you know, of course, now it's the AirPods and things like that. And so it's important. It's important that you, you're finding different, different, experiences and seeing how it's being interpreted so nah larry you you had that right on the head also uh last thing i was gonna say about the headphones okay so over the last two months every beat that i've done specifically like for the multiple battles and whatnot has been headphones uh first and then speakers later i usually don't like to do that i like to i prefer monitors but what i found is creatively there's less of a psychological game when i'm worried about are other people listening to it, right? Like I got I got my family around me and they're like listening to the music and I'm like, all right, like am I, I just, it's in my head. I can't stay in my zone. But when it's in my headphones and I know I'm the only one listening to it, I think that's a factor that you should probably look into is does your musical experience, your creative experience change when it's just you? Uh, I think that's very, very, very important. But um, those yeah. are the things I got to say about that. For sure. So... Uh, another question, uh, and mind you, you guys don't have to keep repeating the questions. I'm copying and pasting them and putting them here, and I'm trying to make sure we get as many as we can uh, through here. Uh, what's the best way to make A, B, and C sections in a beat to make it have variety? So it's kind of like a songwriting question, but also, too, I guess it's it's more about creating, like, you know, the bridges and, and intros and pre-bridges yeah. and things like that. Uh, what do you think is the best way to create those sections and give a beat variety um secondary melodies you know melodies that feed off of each other um different variations you know a lot of times when uh i feel like a beat is stiff or something i want to make like another b section or or a c section i might take that melody and maybe half time it or something for the b section so that way it keeps the same overall vibe or sometimes in edm you can double time and half time drums you know mm -hmm. one section is half time trap and then you could speed it up or um, you could have an AB section on a hook as well. A lot of times where you can just double the speed up, uh, you know, trap and, and hip hop pretty much stays the same timing throughout the whole song or the beat. So in that case, I would, you know, drop drums out on a B section, take the 808s and the kicks out, leave the hats and claps and snares, throw some sort of low pass or high pass filter on that B section, you know, uh, route your drums to a drum bus put a filter on just the drums. So just the drums are filtered throughout that B section. Mm -hmm. uh, there's tons of things you can do. Get super creative with it. You know, yeah. uh, I feel like those are some of the things that I do as far as like making a variation and creating some dynamic. Yeah. I, 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 I try not like for me when I'm, when I'm, when I'm making a beat, man, I will lose so much steam if I'm thinking of it too technical. Like, as I'm looking yeah. at the A, B, and C, I'm glad you explained it. The way. And I think that's what made uh, our collaboration so fun <laughs> was the fact that those things where I'm not so technically based, you do them with such ease and explain it with such, such <laughs> like, easy to way to e the easiest way to follow. I'm looking at this, like, A, B, and C, and I'm like, man, I just want to make some music. And, 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 and I want to <laughs> yeah. and I want to basically create moments. And yep. some moments are created, like you said, by experimenting with your sound and making it seem like, yo, I don't know. Sometimes I'll create the outro of a beat and have no idea it's the outro. And I'm like, something's going to happen with this part. I don't know what yet. And then as I'm putting the beat together, I'll forget I even did it. And then I'm like, yo, wait a minute. that Let's bring it back. And then we bring it back and then it becomes that. But um, yeah. you just go off a of vibe. A lot of people try to look for the answer in, in technical terms, but a lot of time it's just a feeling and a lot of these things I just had to find out 
now I just know how to explain it a little bit better. But when I was starting out, I kind of just had to figure out a lot on my own. And, you know, I could, I could tell you different things and different techniques and technical terms, how to create an A, B and C section, but you, you probably already do it without even knowing it, without even knowing why you did that or how you did it. Because we all listen to music on an everyday basis, pretty much. You already know structures and you already know that all you have to do is just kind of reverse engineer things Thanks. and you know if you want to get technical about it but most of the time it's just a vibe and mostly everybody just goes off feeling some people like i i couldn't even explain it for a long time i'm just now getting to the point where i can explain why i did certain things or how to do certain things um, yeah. but yeah it He's takes like- time Hey, and by the way, these are great questions, by the way. I'm, I'm, I'm like really, really uh, uh, grateful to get these kind of questions because I think that uh, we're able to help so many different people at the same time with these questions. So mixing on FL Studio, what is the best compressor? This is all you. <laughs> uh, the best, best compressor, I think, is uh, the Fruity Limiter, like on the compressor settings. Yeah. Because if, you, if, if uh, you're just starting out and you don't know what compression does, and you don't know how to use it, I think that gives you a nice visual uh, aspect of things, you know, which I think FL Studio has done a great job with that. And um, I think we explained this a little bit in the course, but uh, like a little bit of the compression side of things, but I use yeah. uh, a lot of visual plugins and I know you shouldn't go only by visual, but you have to make sure that if you are using a visual plugin, like Fruity Compressor, I mean, a uh, Fruity Limiter on the compressor settings or the parametric EQ2, that you're not only going by the vision aspects of it, because, you know, they can be pretty, the colors are jumping around. But as far as the compressor, I think that's the best one FL has, in my opinion, stock, because it gives you a good visual to go off of um, without getting too technical what threshold and ratio and attack and release and knee and all those uh, different knobs do. I think the limiter on the compressor setting is the best way to go if you're just starting out using uh, compression and getting to know it. Nice, nice. Yeah, I I mean... Aside from from what uh, the the limiter, I don't really use too much compression. If you really being like, if you really want to know, like I I understand what it does, but I don't really use too much. A lot of the plugins, like for instance, um, what is that? Uh, I'd have to open it up, but it's not the one knob series, but it's one of those um, that like those they have like vocal presets. They have a built in compressor in them that kind of like. Burnt, like for my for my Vox effects, is I'll use those. In the CLA. Bring, uh, say it again. CLA. Yes, yes. There you go. I knew I knew yeah. talking enough to you. It, it's gonna come out. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, CLA for sure. Uh, next question: Is Patcher underrated? Could Patcher replace Ozone Advance and other Waves plugins? I think it's important for us to first explain what Patcher is because it's funny. I, I'm starting to see a lot more producers talk about Patcher. And um, they're trying to really figure out, you know, uh, what is it? What does it do? Why are, why are people now kind of kind of coming around to understand it? What what have you understood, Patcher ass? Um, I personally, I don't use it that much, honestly. OK, I um, I, I know a little bit about it. I don't go too deep into it. I know you probably use it a lot more than I do. Yeah. Um, so if you want to touch on that, you could touch on that. So- I personally just use, you know, the old school way of just, you know, mixer slots and all all that stuff. So I specifically started using Patcher. I saw it on a tutorial on IG where somebody pulled up this thing, Patcher in the, in the mixing plugins uh, on a mixer. And so I, and they basically did it to show you how you can manipulate, uh, or basically sound design a snare. And they have like within Patcher, all these presets that allow you to, it's almost like when you go on your phone and you're editing a photo, folks don't know who have a, a lot of folks don't know who have an iPhone. You can, you can manipulate things like the brilliance. You can manipulate things like, you know, the exposure and the contrast and all these different options. And a lot of folks are just like, I just don't want it to be dark and they leave it alone. This is kind of the equivalent in FL studio where if I have an 808, I can use the, the, the bass drum, I think it is, or the bass patcher preset and i'm able to manipulate different frequencies of the 808 and bring out different things like for instance there's a knob that's just pure sub i could bring the sub out of, out of the 808 uh i could bring the i think they call it the growl or the distortion and rumble i could bring that out i could bring out the mids of the 808 and so 
they I wouldn't say it replaces ozone, but I do think that it could enhance what you have going on. And I would just say, just thinking bigger picture with your stock plugins, do not sleep on your stock plugins. That's not to, you know, that's not to hide information. Like people think I'm hiding information when I tell them I'm only using a saw clipper on my master. No, no, no. Simple is better for me. The more simple approach I have with it, the less things that FL Studio has to process when I'm using all of these contact libraries. And so the more advanced the VSTs and the plugins that I, not the plugins, but the, um, like the additional libraries I'm using, the more simplistic my mixing process has to be. And so a part of that is Patcher, which now, especially for sound design, I'm able to kind of boost in places in different ways that I, the parametric equalizer may be limited. And so, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I wouldn't say it replaces it. I think those Wave plugins are the price that they are for a reason. But also, uh, you don't want to sleep on those FL patchers for sure. All right. This is all you, Larry. How do I get a perfect vocal in FL Studio 20? And uh, can I just say, first and foremost, why I say this is all Larry? Because Larry has a section in <laughs> our course dedicated to how to record, edit, and mix your vocals all in FL Studio. Uh, FL Studio's come a long way where it does, didn't, you didn't, you used to always be as dope as it is now, but uh, how do you get a perfect vocal in FL Studio 20? A um, few different things before you even record. You know, make sure you have a quiet enough room. Um, I record vocals in this room that I'm in right now. It used to be a lot more open. If you can see, there's a wall behind me now. It used to be super open and far back, 1,200 square feet, just completely open. I recorded vocals in here anyway. I just made sure that the room was quiet during the recording process. I know nobody has, like, not everybody has a vocal booth or an isolation booth. Um, so that's, like, you know, that's the new norm. You don't have to have a booth. Everybody, like, a few years back and even now is like, you don't have a booth. You can't create great sounding vocals. You look at Billie Eilish. They don't have, they didn't have a booth. They did everything in their room. Her and her brother did everything in a bedroom. No vocal booth, you know? Uh, put blankets up, put pillows up, whatever you got to do to deaden the sound a little bit more, do that. Start off with a clean vocal, quiet room, quiet as possible, quiet as you can get. I think um, the next thing, you want a decent mic. You don't have to go out and spend $1,000 on a mic. You really, you don't have to. You could spend anywhere from $150 to $300 on a mic and get a great recording and get a, a great quality sound. Um, you don't necessarily need a preamp. But if you can afford a preamp and get yourself a preamp, I would suggest it. A lot of the uh, most, all of the uh, interfaces come with their own preamps. They're not always that great, but they'll get the job done unless you need uh, an additional like power source on your microphone. So I'd say those like three things, um, I think are the most ideal to get a clean sounding recording, professional sounding recording. Then after that, it's just, it, it's, it's on the mixing side of things. And also make sure that you're not clipping. Most important nice. thing, um, anything, um, that's hitting in the orange. You don't want to hit any anywhere in the orange. You know, it's it's yellow or the greenish. Then it goes to the orange. Then it'll be in the red. You don't even want to hit that orange. Make sure it's at a level where you're not even hitting that orange. And if it sounds too low, you know, turn the beat down a little bit to match with the vocal. I know people struggle with that. Um, or put a compressor on. Uh, monitor a compressor. If you can do that without printing all those effects, I have a video about that as well. Um, but those are all you know, ma major keys when it comes to the recording process. It's actually what you do before recording rather than during it to get a cleaner sound. And, and not to break the flow of answering these questions, but this is the reason why I hope to see you guys Thursday. Um, if you've already visited the link, you've already seen that there's a video there that basically shows you what we did last week, how we're answering these questions now. It'd be so much easier if you were able to see an FL Studio screen in front of you. Am I wrong? Um, so we want to do that and give you that experience. And we want to make sure that we do that in a private setting so that we're able to, cause right now I'm seeing a bunch of questions pop up and some of them are kind of in line with that fail. It's not a problem. You're all good. We're going to answer them, but I want to make sure that we get in a place where we're able to answer your questions, give you the value first. And then if you're interested in the course, come on and join us on the other side, but, um, join up, man. Uh, you know, definitely sign up, put your email in there. You can watch the video and see if this is the kind of thing for you, but we're talking to producers one-on-one. -on -one, and on top of that, you'll be joined by other producers who have already joined the course and can tell you like, uh, Based upon what I've seen, this may be for you, maybe not for you, uh, but I think that you're going to enjoy being in there with other like-minded individuals, uh, other FL Studio users, as well as us answering your questions on screen. 
So uh, check us out there at uh, advancedflstudio.com. It's right there, forward slash Zoom, and we'll be there. So let's get back to some more questions. Uh, that's a that's a that's a Larry O question for sure. I, when I'm <laughs> I'm just now learning to really get my vocals, um, you know, on FL Studio, but it, the flow of it is just so fun that I'm. Bro, still I could like, do a know, whole course on I could do a whole course on vocal recording, <laughs> mixing, editing. You know, I could do I could probably do a, a 10, 12 hour course just on that. Bro. I know it's, you it's, could. I know you there's, could. There's a lot that goes into it, and um, you know. The, the section in, in the in the course about vocal uh, recording, editing, and mixing um, is probably the long one of the longer ones that I did in there as well. So I tried to give like all of the information that I can. Getting a clean sound and recording, what you do when you um, get the actual audio clips inside of FL Studio because right. that can be confusing as well. Trying to route them, creating a vocal bus, vocal template, um, which there's also a vocal uh, preset in there with stock plugins right. uh, in the course too. Okay, let me let me address elephants in the room. He says, "Thanks, Gabe, for the click funnel scam. You have never been scammed. You have never been scammed through no click funnels. Uh, <laughs> this is this kind of dialogue that I that that it's discouraging to see because everybody's entitled to their opinion. But I'll tell you this: the information cannot walk you through the process. The information can guide you, but the information cannot turn you into a success. You have to be the one that decides." where the success comes from. And I am one person that has for sure found success when I was using the funnel system. I just don't sell beats anymore. So be careful, especially when there's partners of mine that have come here and have given their time and their information for free when you want to call them scammers. I don't take that lightly. I don't like to hear anybody that I know that has given me value and anybody in my audience value. Just don't don't come with that energy. If you think it's a scam, leave leave you're, yeah. you're you're not saving anybody you're not jesus go home go home <laughs> and stay home and don't spread this covid <laughs> uh so the next question how do i make my 808s jump out of my mix um good samples good mixing sounds good sound selection to start you know you got to have the right 808 sample to start with in order for it to jump out of your mix and to sound like it meshes well with the rest of your beat um, you know, people overlook the sound selection side of things. So definitely do your research on different sound designers. Where are you getting your 808s? I know uh, Curtis and Slap Experts drop Fire 808s, Cymatics, uh, Producer Grind, like you name it. Like there, there's there's names out there that are dropping Fire 808s. Facts. Decap. Um, I can't. There's so many I I can't even name. But the the source of your 808s is gonna be the most important part of that puzzle to get them to pop out in your mix, Facts. you know? And then it, on the other side of it, it's, it's mixing, making sure that you're rolling off low end on sounds that don't need to have low end. So they don't fight with that 808. Yeah. You know, if, if you, if you're into it, side chain, your kicks and 808s. If you're not, uh, there's other ways to go around it. Finding the right kick sample that doesn't clash with the 808. Right. That's huge too. And speaking of which that, I mean, this is kind of out of order, but somebody asked that very question. They said side chain the 808 or nah. I mean, I think it depends on it depends on the song, mm -hmm. and I say it depends a lot. I know, like that's a, like an easy answer, but it it's really does depend. It, it yeah. does, it does, it does depend. It, it's it's these certain situations. There's a lot of questions that you guys have are not just right wrong. They're not just black white. Yeah. They're you know, a lot of it. There, there's a lot of details that comes to this. That's why, um, that's why we have this course that's so long and in detail. That's why we're hopping on answering questions now because. It, it's it's a lot it's a lot more than just a one minute video too that's why yeah. i i do the, i do those one minute videos for people's convenience but there's a lot more that goes into it that's why i i, I do a lot of other things where i explain in more detail because it's not just yes no it's not just black or white yeah um so side chaining it depends on the song it depends on the 808 sample mm -hmm. it depends on the kick sample mm -hmm. you know it it just depends it depends on your ear do you like it do you not like it try things out Try different samples. Try yeah. different techniques of side chaining. There's mul there's there's like that I can think of three different ways that you can side chain, and mm -hmm. they all sound slightly different. Mm -hmm. So try different techniques of side chaining. Yeah, and I think once you understand what side chaining is, like I had to understand it as punching a hole, one sound punching a hole in the other one. Um, uh, however, 
inc- however however aggressive you want that to be is based upon where you have the threshold at and different different knobs. But when I understood that, I was like, what am I trying to? Why am I trying to side chain this? And when I told myself to make the kick appear to hit harder, I was like, no, nah, that's on, that's that's one way that somebody somebody may do it, but it doesn't make the 808 hit harder. It, it, it mm. takes away from that initial punch of the 808 because it's being occupied by the space and the duration of the kick. So like Elario said, it depends on the style. I know there's certain uh, uh, future bass sounds, and I know that's, uh, you do a lot of EDM as well. Uh, there's certain future bass sounds where it creates an effect, and it's not necessarily a mixing technique. It's an effect that you're getting yeah. from that that, you know, when you listen to like these 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 uh really strong future bass pads that are like and then you get a kick that's like yeah. like I know that sounds crazy to anybody who doesn't know, but uh <laughs> that's definitely gonna be a meme. But that's what Somebody I'm saying. Sample that right Somebody there. about to sample that and be like, that's Curtis <laughs> trying to do a side chain in real life. Uh <laughs> that uh, that effect I think is is there for it, but to make your 808s hit harder or your kicks hit harder. I think it's an optical illusion that's not necessary. You can do that through EQing. You can do that, like like Lario said, through uh, having good choices in 808s. When you're choosing certain sound designers, understand what kind of sound designer you're, you're getting with when you're listening to their sounds. Somebody like a decap, he's not really asking for you to add too much more to that 808. He's already ran it through his own Pro, you know, of a, 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 a FX chain. He's already ran it through. I think he said he uses some of the Slate digital plugins. He's already ran it through all of these things. And by the time you get it, now you're about to compress over, compress over, compress over, and add more stuff that he's already added. And it has nothing to do with his 808. It has more so to do with the sounds in relativity to what he's already there. So right. um, I, I think that's important too to realize some sound designers, like even like us as slap experts, we want to make it to where. All you got to do is insert that 808 and maybe just do a boost in some of the frequencies that you prefer. But we try to make it as easy as possible on the producers. Some people like to leave headroom in order to let you add all that stuff. But uh, it's all about preference for sure. Yeah. And just to add on that just a little bit, um, Mm -hmm. you don't have to do something to every sample. Kind of just to piggyback off of what you just said. You don't have to add effects and think like you said with decap and the samples that you guys drop. Uh, you most mo, more times than not nine times out of ten you drop those in there and get them in the right key and they're gonna sound good don't feel like you have to eq everything Facts. don't feel like you have to boost everything don't feel like you have to distort everything you know a lot of these samples sound good as is we just feel the need and i'm you know i'm guilty of it for years bro for years right. where i felt like i had to put an eq on every channel i had to put a compressor on every channel and you don't need to now you know my beats look like you look in the mixer and it's like, oh, they're just leveled and there's no plugins on 80% of them, you know, sometimes it's just the samples already sound that good. Especially the higher quality VSTs that we started using. When I started using uh, uh, freaking um, contact libraries, I did less and less EQing, even like cancellation of certain frequencies. There wasn't a necessity for me to do that because the, the, the designer of that library they already did that for me. They already made it to where all I got to do is insert these sounds. And I'm like, why does this beat sound so good? And I haven't even applied anything. No parametric equalizer two. no, uh, uh, you know what I mean? Like I haven't applied anything in here except for maybe some minor filtering. And uh, it still sounds so good. I think what's, what's kind of crazy about how we're answering these questions, these were all asked in order and they're all leading into one another. It says, what if old samples do not match with your instruments? Even you know the scale, but they don't match together. I, I'll say one thing, and I'm going to let Larry O take this one over too. When you're talking about taking samples from older songs and you're talking about taking samples from, um, you know, uh, hold on, let me actually pin this, uh, this message you just put up there. Uh, when you're talking about <clears throat> taking older samples that don't match, first thing I think you should pay attention to, especially if you're adding drums first and not trying to add melodies, Make sure your drums are in the right key, right? Make sure that your 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 snare, because your snare has a key. It may not feel like it. Your kick for sure has a has a has a, a, yeah. a, a bassy type of key. If you put that in the right key, the music is just going to sound like it meshes together so much better. And so I think that's the first thing. And then also too, 
uh, something I, my mom just told me the other the other day when I was talking to her. She's played piano for over 35 plus years. Something she told me is that she would go to churches and as a choir director, she would tell the the organ player, hey, I need you to play this in like, you know, the, the this scale, this E minor scale. And he would have tuned his keyboard or his piano to, to, to some other key so that it makes it easy for him to play his favorite uh, uh, scales that he's actually out of the he's playing the right thing, but he's out of the he's he's in the wrong key. If that makes any yeah. sense. So a lot of these folks who put stuff up there um, and then by the time it reaches the DAW and they're trying to determine the key, it's not on point all the time. But I know, Larry, you use something like uh, mixed in key, correct? Yeah, I use mixed in key. I I think I saw somebody make a post on Instagram about it and I was just like instantly blown away. I bought it within like a half an hour and it was like 60 bucks, 70 bucks. And it literally saved me so much time especially with in studio sessions i don't do too much of those anymore obviously with everything going on right. but I still use it in every beat i still use it in every beat that i make like if i drop samples in there and uh or if i even just like make a melody without knowing what key i'm in just to double check just to make sure i might throw mixed in key on my master channel just to detect the key of it so that way if i add any counter melodies i already know i'm taking the guessing work out of a lot of Fire. things um i do that and same thing goes for if you're getting loops, I throw it on there. And um, like, say you don't know the key of the loop, throw it on there. That way, you know what to tune your kicks and your 808s and your snares if you need to, or toms, you know, not everything like has a long pitch. So um, I, but I always, always 100% of the time tune my kicks. Yeah. Make sure that those are tuned. Um, if you're getting uh, samples from, again, from like big sources, like, uh, they have them named already. Most of the time they'll be named. The keys will be named. So it takes some of the guessing out of that. Um, but not all the time. The loops aren't named yeah. and labeled as far as key. And sometimes they're wrong. Sometimes, um, you know, everybody's human. And when they put these packs together, they might get it wrong. So just double check before you get into it. It takes a lot of the headache out of it in the long run. So true. And shout out to the homie Aaron Barber who's in here. He says the transpose key is such a great way to train your ear. Aaron, I got to get you in here for music theory. Uh, dialogue the same way that, that Larry Owen and I are talking about FL Studio. Aaron, I got to get you in here for a music theory dialogue really, really soon. I think that a lot of producers would really benefit from your information. Aaron Barber, if you don't know, is a part of Slap Experts, and he just has the ability to listen, hum, and tell you exactly what key that's in. Hey, I've seen him that's do it, and, and it's just ridiculous. I'm sitting like, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. Are you for real? Like, you know, and he's telling you, if you take that, neck, that third progression and you push up this note he's like breaking it down like it's the piano roll out of, in, out of his out of his head it's the craziest thing i've ever <laughs> seen but uh we got to get you on here really really soon uh and shout out to him because he's been giving you guys these beautiful uh, melodic loops along with the homie nobby and uh what he's packs uh here's a fun question this is kind of like a little bit off topic but uh what is your what is your go-to plug-in larry owen what's your all-time favorite plug-in my go-to plug-in as far as instruments or like effects? probably probably just anything um number one instrument plugin that i probably open in every session now has got to be it's got to be omnisphere yeah. you know it used to be it changes every like few years you know what i'm saying it changes <laughs> like i know omnisphere has been around for a long time but now as of late it's become the go-to plugin for every producer you know if you don't yeah. have omnisphere you feel like you're missing out on a lot of a lot of stuff so uh Omnisphere pretty much makes its way into 95% of my sessions. Nice. Um, it, used, it used to be back in the day, it used to be Nexus. And then it was uh, Silent for a long time, Serum. Yeah. Uh, but now it's it's Omnisphere. And as far as an effect goes, I would say, because um, I use a lot of stock plugins. Um, if I say stock, my favorite, I'll, I'll go stock and third party as far as effects. Mm -hmm. My favorite and most used plug-in has got to be the eq2 parametric eq2 yes, i mean sir. that's a it's a basic one to say but it's it's facts you know yeah I, that's my go-to i don't use anything fancy for an eq plugin. Mm -hmm. i have some really dope slate plugins uh the slate eq that he just dropped recently a couple months ago is absolutely fire man, I fab filter eq that. fire <laughs> i gotta it's finally so open it oh man i gotta open it so I, I just been so distracted with everything going on i, I finally got to get to it um yeah hell yeah it was uh was did i cut you off or was that did you have anything else no, that you want to that's okay. pretty much it that's pretty much it yeah so for me fl soft clipper 
for sure. Fruity Soft Clipper, for sure. And it's kind of a tie for me between the Endless Smile plug-in and Easy Mix. Those are two of my favorites when it comes to that. In terms of sound. I've never used those. Man, Easy Mix. I slept on Easy Mix thinking Easy Mix was like a lazy man's approach to mixing things. And it really, and I, and I had the wrong impression. It gives you inspiration for, like, for instance, the first time I ever added uh, a guitar distortion to an 808 was because of one of their presets. And it was one of like the craziest effects that I've ever done. And I was like, yo, I never would have thought of that had I not had this list of organized effects per instrument. So like for cymbals, say if I have like my hi-hats that are super trappy, but I want them to have the space of a live drum set, I can apply a live preset from Easy Mix straight onto those hi-hats and make it sound like it's a live drummer playing uh, these trappy hi-hats, which is like crazy to even think of. But like, say I want my splashes or my crashes to be more cinematic. I put easy mix over the top of them and it just opens up everything for me. So, uh, I That's think, awesome. man, you, you find ways to use these things and they, and they help endless smile is just like, it's like my lazy man's approach to adding instant delay reverb and space to a vocal. So like there's like the last, like I, wor I worked on the beat this last week, um, called Wake Up with the system of a down sample. And that vocal is so harsh. But when I add uh, Endless Smile, it just it brightens it. It makes it feel a little bit uh, 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 backed up in the mix. And it just has space. So I love it. I, you know, I, I, I love talking this stuff. I'm sure there's a lot of stuff that we can, <laughs> still can add to I it. Hate, I love, but I hate that question at the same time because <laughs> I, like, I like so many plugins. You know, I mean, uh, somebody mentioned Ozone. I use... I use ozone in every beat too, pretty much. Well, not every beat. When I go to master, I use yeah. ozone. Um, stereo imager on ozone is fire. I love it. So fire. Um, you can use it like we were talking about in the IG live stream. Uh, decap and a lot of people sometimes I do use it on 808s because sometimes you know when you're adding the saturation and distortion on 808s, you want to um, you want to have those higher frequencies. You know, spread maybe more stereo, but you know, as, as far as a space in the mix goes, you want to keep the low frequencies mono. Yes. And you can do that with something like Stereo Imager. Uh, it's fire. So you can do it on individual instruments. I use it mostly on my master uh, when I'm going to master like a full song with vocals. Absolutely. No, that's uh, so very much needed. Uh, next question. How, I need help with layering a loop. I feel like I've already watched a video of yours very recently with this. I need help layering a loop. Like, what can I do to make a full, make a beat feel full? Layering a loop with another loop or uh, just I, another instrument? I think they just want to layer the loop. I think they're saying, I need help with layering a loop. So maybe they have a melodic loop. Maybe they have something that's just like, it's a, it's it's they see the potential in it, but they want to add things to it and not ruin it or get in the way of it. Um it said, what can I do to make a beat feel full? Yeah, adding uh, counter melody is definitely one of those things that you can do to make it feel full. Um, again, make sure that you're in the right key or you know what key you're, you're in. That's going to be the biggest thing. If you don't know music theory and you don't know scales and things like that and you're using FL Studio, uh, we go into this in the course as well. You just dropped the link. <laughs> you yeah. get me. <laughs> you get me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so what you could do is use tools in the piano roll like ghost channels. Um, you know, if you're using a loop, you won't have any ghost channels to go off of. So you use something like the scale highlighters. Mm -hmm. So this only helps if you know what key you're in. Uh, so before, like I, I mentioned, if you don't know how to tell the key, use something like mixed in key. You can try to use Edison or a free one like Key Finder. It's a desktop app. Yeah. Find the key, find the key, find the key. Knowing the key beforehand is going to help you. If you don't know music theory, there's tools to help you do that because it's definitely the most frustrating thing for a producer going into this not knowing music theory. That's the number one place where you get stuck is, all right, yo, I got a good loop. I got good drums, but I, it doesn't sound full enough. I need another melody. But every time I add a melody, it sounds out of key. Mm -hmm. So know the key beforehand. You go into the piano roll to add your secondary counter melody and you, you choose scale highlighting, choose the key that you're in, and go off of that, go off of the grayscale on that. Facts. And that's going to be a huge time saver and a huge help. And it'll even help you understand a little bit more of music theory because you'll know what keys, what notes are in certain scales. 
Yeah, that's man. I, it's so, so important. Uh, also, last thing I wanted to add to it because you nailed that is um, with those. Don't sleep on the simplicity of adding octaves, octave uh, 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 changes between. So a low C yeah. and a high C can do so much when you have a piano. Like say you have, you know, uh, 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 like a really, really bright synth loop. And it's like, bloop, 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 bloop. but you add that piano underneath it, it's like, Groom. adding that low C and then the high C. And just doing things like that that allow you to make the beat feel like it has more space, but it's not being cluttered. I feel like there's a lot of things that you can do with that. I've seen you do that when you're talking about making your piano loops more interesting by uh, adding different octaves and kind of playing those super chords. I think that's yeah. important. Uh, but then also, too, realizing that there's certain instruments. The purpose of bass is to fill in where it feels empty. And sometimes, I don't know if you ever got, I know you got this feeling where you're making a beat and you're like, what is this missing? And then you add the bass and it's like, damn it, that's it. Like that yeah. was it. That That's what was missing. Or if you're a producer that's producing for rappers, you know why it feels empty? Because the last instrument to be added is the vocal. Exactly. So leave yep. the space. Sometimes it's okay for it to feel like it needs something else because that something else is the vocal. It is... Mm -hmm what somebody else is going to add to it. And sometimes like, you know, you guys know my biggest issue. And I, I think I figured out why my biggest issue of overproducing. Um, and this kind of answers another question, which is good. Cause it's a, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a two for one, but uh, somebody was asking a question about, um, I'm looking through it. I'm looking through it. Uh, I'm trying to figure out where it was at. Um, Okay, I'm not seeing it, but basically they were asking a question about overproducing. Oh, here it goes. How can I stop overproducing and putting too many sounds? I figured out why I overproduced, ladies and gentlemen. It's because I came into this game as a sample-based producer, first of all, and I came sampling samples from the 70s where they had full-on bands and a bunch of different instrument players. So that was how my mind was trained in terms of musical layers. That's one. Two, beat battle beats are specifically made to not leave room for vocals because you're only yep. judging the music as you hear it. So for me, that's how I came up. And so I don't think that fighting against that is necessarily a bad thing unless you're trying to produce for artists. If you are, if you feel like you're overproducing, ask yourself some questions that are a little bit away from music. One, am I over here producing for other producers approval? Uh, and another one could be, Am I overproducing or am I making instrumental music, beat tape music, stuff that is sp supposed to be enjoyed just as music itself with no vocals over the top? Because if that's the case, you'll start to understand why certain producers add so many sounds. And I don't think you should fight against what your natural in instinct is because you may be that kind of producer that people only want to listen to your beats without vocals. That's the only thing I'll say about that. But Larry, I know you got some gems for this one. Uh. What was the initial question? So the initial question is, how can I stop overproducing and putting too many sounds in my beats? Yeah. Basically, um, yeah, try. Here's a really simple, quick answer. If you can find, if you can do it, like if you have acapellas, drop an acapella. If you're, an, if you're a producer that's looking to, like, like Curtis said, if it depends who you're producing for, right? right. If you're going into it saying, I'm, the, I'm an EDM producer and I don't need any vocals, fill it up, you know? you're, you're going to need to fill that space up that a vocal would originally take. If your goal is to get artists, rappers, singers on your beats, then you need to leave that space. Try finding an acapella online. They're all online. You can, you can find older ones a lot easier than newer ones. Yeah. Uh, find an acapella, time it into that tempo, and then see if it feels like it's missing anything. If, it's, if you feel like it's missing something, even with that acapella, then try to add something around the acapella. I have, um, I'm, I've been lucky enough to work with a lot of different artists in the studio and I will just make a skeleton of a beat. You know, if you're working with hands-on with, with artists, get them used to hearing beats that aren't necessarily completely finished. Say, all right, here, here's a skeleton. It's one loop, couple drum changes, write, record to it, then go in and see if you need to add anything. That Facts. way, there's no chance of you overproducing. You know, there's no chance. There's There's literally like no chance. Just add like one main sound, maybe two, and some drums and bass, and call it a day until they write, record to it, then go in, 
and then I structure and I add other melodies and different change ups and effects and all that stuff. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you in here, I mean, you're hearing the value from Larry O himself. If you already know who he was, you know, this is nothing new. Uh, but for those of you that are experiencing it for the first time, you see why it was a no brainer. Like we had to come together and create this course. Um, if you are enjoying the information that you're getting in there, the folks that are still here, because a lot of this stuff is not for everybody. Some folks are like, look, fam, I'm just looking for the on switch on FL Studio. Y'all are going <laughs> too much into detail. If you guys are finding value in here, please let us know. Let us know in the chat if you're finding this valuable, if you're finding this information to be valuable or at least helpful in any sense, uh, let us know because uh, we're doing this specifically for you. Uh, and we want to make sure that even beyond just this YouTube, we on Thursday, we want to provide even more value to you. Uh, this ain't this ain't even like a, imagine us talking about this stuff, but being able to open up FL Studio and show you right then and there. That's what we want to accomplish on Thursday. And that link that you've been seeing here at the bottom, that's what this link is all about. Um, let me make sure you guys can still make sure you guys can are you are we still on you guys still can see us because i'm my, my screen just froze it looks good on my end i'm watching on youtube right now too okay that was just maybe my phone okay cool cool okay i'll see it now looks good it looks good on my feed okay i just never know what obs you know obs put the bs and yeah, obs so um <laughs> you just never know so i gotta make sure i was like <laughs> but uh but cool yeah definitely just sign up I promise you guys are not going to get spam. It's not going to be like, don't get scared because you see something created on ClickFunnels. It doesn't mean that everything that's on funnels is going to throw you into endless emails and things that, um, uh, you know, other marketing fields have done. Don't worry about that. The whole idea is that anything that I attach my, not my name to, anything that this individual attaches his name to, Larry O, is going to always be a value, even if you decide to sign up to the course or not. Uh, I don't want to say that's not our concern, but it is our concern to provide value no matter what we do. So we're grateful to have you in here, grateful to have your questions, but we don't want to forget the fact that we are here to make sure we, we answer your specific questions on Thursday. But the only way to get that link is to make sure that you join uh, this email list, which if, you, if it's not for you, you can always jump off to show you that we're here to just give you value first. You can actually watch an hour long video of us answering questions on FL Studio, specifically Larry O last week by going to that link and you could watch that video and not sign up. But if you want to get your information and things answered, sign up and we'll see you there on yep, Thursday. We're going to be having people. Yes. Get your cameras on. We're going to be having people on camera talking, asking questions, uh, giving feedback on everything. Um, I did see one question in here by Rich Hunter. He uh, he's asked sure. it a few times. Um, should we get new tone or melodyne and Terry's auto tune access or waves tune? Um, all right. Great question. Um, I'm a stock guy pretty much. And I've uh, used melodyne here and there. So this is mainly for like vocals. You can use it for other things, but if you want, if you want to tune vocals and give it that uh, real, that real vibe, not the auto tune robotic vibe is you would go with something like melodyne or new tone. Personally, I use New Tone and it's fire. It's absolute fire because if you haven't used Melodyne and you're not used to the structure of it and the platform and the layout of it, it's it's really new to you. You've got to learn every little bit of it. Yeah. But New Tone is made by FL Studio. So all the buttons do the same thing. You're used to seeing all those buttons and knobs. It is a different plugin, so you're going to have to get used to it in that aspect. But as far as shortcuts and all that stuff, they're all pretty much the same thing. And it's a layout that you're used to seeing. So I would say go at New Tone because it's great. It's an in it's an in uh, it's an inside of the DAW plugin, just like Melodyne. But Melodyne is third party, and you have to you know you have to export out of out of FL Studio into Melodyne. A whole bunch of mess that you don't really need. Melodyne is a great plugin, but why not use it if it's inside of FL Studio and it does the same exact thing, plus a little bit more actually. I think. You know, it has that option. My favorite option with Newtone is the fact that you can set it to the scale of your song. If you know the key of your song, this is another reason why I use mixed in key mm -hmm. uh, when I'm going to tune vocals. Uh, you can set the scale. I just posted a video about this too. Set the scale and then you can snap to the scale. So w w when you snap to the scale, you highlight all the notes inside of Newtone and you just right click and it locks them all into notes that are only in the scale. So then if you have to nudge That's notes crazy. up or down, it's not going to nudge it's, it's not going to nudge them into any wrong notes. They're only going to be 
they're only going to be in that scale. So there's literally like no messing up. It's oh just like, God. all right. And you could see it too. It will skip two notes or it'll skip one note over a note. That's not in that scale. Okay. See, this but, is why, this is why you, this is why you got to have at least one friend like Larry O. Cause I didn't send him, <laughs> I've sent him text messages. I'm like, look, bro, I'm not trying to waste your time, but I got a homie that he, he has a great question. And uh, he's a reputable one, and I just want to—I just want to value your time. He's like, bro, it's nothing. Just shoot, shoot me the question. And to be able to have somebody access to someone that can explain it just the way he did. Imagine now the fact that we got a 12-hour course together. Uh, you guys already know how I am ex- in terms of explaining things. Larry, man, Larry's just—he's—he's a—he's—he's he's, he's a wizard at this. He's a wizard at this, <laughs> but he makes it so easy to follow. So. Uh, you gotta love that and respect that. Of course, of course. Uh, another question I was asked: uh, Have you seen the Scalar Two update? What do you think of it, and do you know when it will be released? I believe it's gonna be released May twenty May twenty fifth, and the fact that I remember that lets you know how much I'm looking forward to it. Oh my! I'm about to get it right now. I, I've been what? hearing too much about. It. It's not. It's not out yet. It's not out yet. Scalar Two is not out yet. Only Scalar One Point Eight is out. Is it a free upgrade when you get it or no? No, no. And when you bro, I'll just wait for just bro, wait for it then. Bro, hey, go watch that video that they released. They released a video showing yeah. you the the oh my they have they now have expressions where basically you'll take you'll take a uh yes, while minor beats, we have lifetime access. You have lifetime access to the videos. Absolutely. This you won't n- nothing Oh, of happen. course. But yeah. of course, yeah. So yep. Skeller 2, they have a, they have now a song mode, which allows you to basically structure all the chord progressions. Like, say you want a verse part, a chorus part, and then a bridge, and then a second verse and an outro. You can, you can do that all there and then drag the MIDI all the way over to your piano uh, and then have it there. That's one. Two, right. they have an expressions mode, bro. An expressions mode that plays your, p- plays your chords and different types of styles that are classically trained. It is crazy. Like I can't even pronounce the, um, the the some of the 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 style presets they have. But I'm looking at this like, and then on top of that, okay, hello. I I I don't want to I don't want to I don't want to give the give it up too early. But I had a conversation with Skeller. Okay, and then this is this is not a paid conversation. But your friend Aaron Barber that was in here. Uh, I I reached out to him to see if they would be open to allowing Aaron Barber to add keys to it and not only did they say they wanted they wanted him his his gospel keys because he's very classically trained they wanted me to add some keys to it too now you know how these things go you'd be like yeah yeah i'm on Skeller too then it comes out and you look in the community tab and you don't see your name i don't have it but the last we talked they said we we're going to add it there so on top of that i feel like i'm involved in this i'm just That's grateful awesome. to be a part of it i don't know for sure though larry i don't give me them props yet i don't know for sure <laughs> Cause I don't want to look like a dodo. They were like, yo, Curtis, man, I opened it up. I ain't see your name nowhere. So uh, <laughs> that'll be embarrassing. But no, I want to make sure you guys know, like I'm all in with Skeller, man. Like I, I really believe that it has helped me between, you know, which some people to look at as embarrassing. The fact that I got my stickers on my keys between, uh, you know, using Skeller. I used to be embarrassed to show that, but I'm like, why are you embarrassed at a tool that is meant to help you? learn music theory it's it's meant to at least if it doesn't help you learn music theory it at least exposes you to what you like and what you're playing and what's the difference mm-hmm. between a seventh and a ninth and uh uh you know a diminished like i'm seeing this now visually so i'm able to now let it kind of filter into my brain so yeah bro hey go look at i gotta send that video to you that yeah. shit looks crazy oh, I'm about to get too. Yeah. i'll wait for it. two man yeah wait for two because i got 1.8 and uh, you know, shout out to to uh, MG the Future and and uh, CMP. I see they were part of the community on there uh, in terms of people people adding core progressions. But like Scalar is really really about the producer community. I can say that for sure because they didn't have to hit us back, uh, and they did, and they were really easy to work with. So yeah, That's okay, awesome. it's gonna be crazy. So uh, you got time for maybe three more questions, and then we'll yep. we'll, uh, we'll 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 let you get back on to to work and whatnot. Uh, yes, do, sir. do producers who want good sound use stock sounds or the other question is where do producers find high quality sounds if that makes sense so I guess they want to ask do producers who want a good sound use stock sounds or do they need to get high quality sounds and if they do need them where do they find them 
Um, it depends. I think if you're into sound design, if you're, you know, if you're that kind of producer where you can make your own sounds, I think uh, stock plugins, there's great stock plugins for sound design. Uh, people use Citrus. Uh, people use 3X Oscillator mm -hmm. for stock plugins. Um, I know there's a few more in there. What was the, uh, what was the new one? Harmer. What was the new Harmer. one? Harmer, but what was the new one that they released? Uh, with an S. Flex. Flex. Oh, Flex. I said an S. Flex. Flex. Yeah, Flex. Flex. Yes, that's another one. Yep. Fire. Yeah, so I mean, it depends what kind of producer you are. I'm not like a real uh, sound design heavy melodic producer. I sound design like more drums, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but I'm like a, I'm a preset tweak kind of dude. So I'll get, that's why I like Omnisphere. That's why I like Silent and Serum. They have great presets that I can go in there, find my way around and tweak them and kind of half sound design them. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, go to sites like uh, Plugin Boutique or whoever, like you can find a lot of free plugins and um, what's another one? Like Splice has good plugins. Uh, there's tons of them that offer payment plans on them, rent to own. Some of them don't, some of them do. Um, yeah. What yeah. do you think? Uh, man, uh, the, the, the more that I understand sound and sound design, the more I understand the power of stock sounds. I feel like my initial reaction to stock sounds was so immature. Cause I was like, Ugh, that's not a real kick. Like <laughs> that's not a trap kick. And then I realized like, it's, it's, I'm right. I'm right. And I'm wrong. I'm wrong to, 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 to poke my nose up at it. I'm right in the fact that it isn't all those kicks. It can be anything I want it to be. It could be an EDM kick. It can be a trap kick. It's all about how I shape it and tone it and change the pitch. When I understood that aspect of it, I was like, yo, like, this is just a manipulation of a sine wave. This is all this is. Right. When, I, when I learned how to turn the tail end of an 808 into a kick, I was like, yo, this is all a manipulation of sound. So... When I saw from that aspect, I started realizing the power of stock sounds and how you're able to use those to create new sounds without worrying about stepping on anybody's toes or stealing anybody's sounds. Now it just comes down to your creativity. Now it comes down to what presets you're willing to try things out, not presets, but plugins, you're willing to try mm -hmm. things out. Now, in terms of high quality sounds, like my go to, you guys already know, my go to is. Um, Obviously, I go to Omnisphere for especially choirs. I go to my contact libraries is my go to. I didn't pay all that money not to use it. Um, right. <laughs> but aside from that, it's just I'm such a drum buff. Like, you know, you and I are both the same in that one. Uh, I love drums so much that it's like the more I understand it, the less I use, the less I feel a need to go external for it. But I mean, yeah. like decap and homie, oh gosh, like those are my two favorite drum sound designers to go to. I just it just fits the kind of sound that I want to make. And I think understanding the sound that you make is just as important. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. So that was one question. Let's uh, let control Z this. I think I might've messed that up. Okay. Um, so this is an example of why I want, I want you guys to join us on Thursday because we can solve this issue by literally getting in front of you on this. It's a long, longer question, but it's kind of, not it says i'm having an issue in fl studio note mode it isn't working no matter what key i hit either get c4 or all of the sounds in my channel rack or nothing at all how do i fix it this is a prime example of let's see what you got going on there and let's yeah. fix it you know what i'm saying so, so i don't know if you know if you can answer that one uh without the screen. it sounds like it sounds like he has a certain scale selected or like an automatic selected. I think if you have automatic selected and scale highlighting, it's going to take away the, 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 um, the notes. I mean, it's not going to take the notes away, but it's going to take away the labels. I think that's what he's referring to. Okay. Okay. Um, so if you go into it and you click, uh, just put it on C, you should be fine. Okay. Like if you go back into piano roll, and scale highlighting. Well, you go into helpers scale highlighting, and you just put it on uh, on C. Uh, it should show you middle C. Nice, nice. If that helps, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty sure that was the question. Yeah, no, I think I think you got that. I think you got that. Yeah. And, if, and if so, I look forward to them joining us on Thursday because yeah, because we'll be able to that. see, like, you'll be able to show a screen and say, "Hey, I'm having this issue." And we're going to have FL Studio pulled up as well on our end and screen sharing it at like a really high quality 
So that way we'd be able to go in. You guys could record what we do, whatever you want to do to it, to, to remember it, watch the playback, whatever. And we'll be able to answer questions hands on like that on Thursday. So there's a last question uh, that I think it involves more so like um, uh, uh, arrangement. Does your advanced course teach transitions displayed in your beats in beat battles? So what I did for, for my beat battle beats are a little bit more dramatic than usual because for for the sake of tutorials, I obviously go about it in a way that is more universal. And so initially when I did this course with Larry O, I wasn't even making beats for beat battles in that current time. So although it's not directly related to it, you still see my habits and my decision making as I'm creating like we in our, in our sampling section and in our arrangement section. And, and I make a, a how do you do a remix using a royalty free hook? You're getting some of those those uh, tips. But this is the value of showing up on Thursday, because if you ask a question like that and I'm able to show it, guess what? If it's valuable to the audience that is there, we'll add it to the course because this course yeah. is not stagnant. We can literally add whatever we want to it so that. The longer you're on it, the more valuable it becomes. Because if we're able to add like this event, we could say advanced course, and no matter what, there's something that we haven't covered because they're constantly updating. So uh, yeah. I, I would say if that is a question that you have, come join us on Thursday. We'll have times and all that very soon, but join us on Thursday. And in, and in as much detail as I can, I will show you what I did. I'll even open up the files and show you from there and then kind of let you know my mindset with it. But I tell you this as a big picture kind of tip. It's not something that's a technical skill to learn. It is something that is an emotional experience to feel because I have been exposed to drops and all these different things my entire life. Not until I got into beat battles that I realized here's the significance of building up energy and then just dropping it out of nowhere into complete silence for a few seconds and then bringing it back. That's an emotional thing that I learned. I didn't, yeah. I didn't, that wasn't something somebody technically gave to me. So in terms of the transitions, I can definitely show you some stuff, but I, you know, I, I do want you to use your own creativity in it. Cause I think you're going to have so much fun on it. Uh, we can share our screens in the course, uh, in the course, not, well, okay. So let me make sure you, I don't, I don't confuse you while minor beats. This thing on Thursday is not a course. That's basically an open workshop. Okay, the course is at advancedflstudio.com. That's already done. It's already finished. You sign up. You go. You sign up as a student. You get access to 12 hours of video, 44 lessons. Boom, you're in there. Over the next few weeks, we'll be adding additional content from these Thursday meetings that are Zoom meetings, which we're going to answer your questions on screen. So that way it gives value to the actual course. Thursday is just an open workshop, uh, a private open workshop for those of you that choose to join uh, at that link at this at the bottom of the screen. So yep. hopefully that clears it up and there's not as much confusion. Yeah. And uh, I think what's going to happen too, is there's going to be people in there that already have the course as well. So you guys will be able to ask them anything about the course, yeah. you know, and, and get their honest opinions on it and that sort of thing, which is going to be really cool too. Yeah. And um, you know, you don't have to get the course to be in this either. It's 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 open to anybody that goes to advancedflstudio.com slash zoo. Yeah. So you you could very well get your information and just go. <laughs> like you we, yeah. we're not we're not holding against you. Uh we don't have to attend the live to purchase the course. No, no. The course is nope. literally if you take away the the forward slash zoom, the course is right there for you, ready to go. Um and for those of you that are curious about the pricing of it, there's two different pricing options. One is a complete one shot that allows you to just get it right then and there. And you get it no matter what instantly, but there's one that's a one-time payment for 147. And there's another one. Cause we obviously re realize we're in some crazy, crazy times. There's a payment plan for $36 per month that enables you to do that for four months. And you have the course. Um, I don't use FL. Can it be applied to Ableton? I wouldn't even want to put you through that because I don't want to, I, as many folks as I can deter from this, that could possibly be refunds. I will quickly tell you if you're a beginner, if you're using another DA, I'm not trying to sell you on snake oil. This is not, this is not probably not for you, but if you have an interest in FL studio, if you're an advanced user, I think there's, there's things in there that could benefit you, but it's, it was not made with you in mind. So just want to be 1000 with you and make sure you understand. The live stream could from. be beneficial. Cause I think 
um, I mean, the Zoom on Thursday could be beneficial, just like this is beneficial to uh, other DAW users. But as far as the course goes, I would say if you're an Ableton user, it's, it's not for you. Yeah. We're not going to try to sell. When I, I wouldn't <laughs> try to sell that to somebody who doesn't use FL, you know, and at least has been experienced in FL for a, a decent amount of time as well. Facts, you know? facts. Yeah, it, we're, we're, this course is doing so well naturally from us giving so much value to our audiences we have no reason to to jump and jump on the greed train it's just naturally moving um what do we already have 100 plus students in this already yeah there's over 100 in there right now that have the course yeah in less than a week and a half that's crazy especially thinking about the circumstances we're in right now uh yeah. i think wild miner is having a little bit of difficulty with this one how much is the thursday session it is absolutely Free free <laughs> and you can you can even see we did the same thing the week before last thursday and it's a video in there that is absolutely free i know it may sound too good to be true but no it's free because the value has i'm just glad that we got this course completed i'm glad that people are ha so happy with it because it took a long time not just for us to record but for the homie j anime to edit this and so to have yeah. it finally out there i'm just i'm i cannot be more proud to put together something like this with an individual like Larry O. Man, it's been a pleasure. Honestly, I keep saying it. I'll say it again. It's this has been a long time coming for me. I think even just the last year of me doing these like tutorials, these quick tutorials on Instagram. Right. And uh, it's been like one of the number one questions is like, when are you dropping a course? When are you dropping a course? And you know, here it is. And I couldn't have had it any other way. It wouldn't, have, it wouldn't have been right any other way really right. to collab with somebody, um, like yourself and as experienced as you are in the game and just ex have experience with courses fl it was just like you know it was just a great match and i think uh you know for my first course i can't i couldn't have asked for a better experience honestly it. and plus it's plus we look, we, we look like cousins so i mean that helps too right? and everybody says we look related <laughs> so it's like it's, meant, it's really like it's really meant to be we waiting on your <laughs> nose ring that's it you, let's, let's complete the cycle get your nose ring and complete the cycle no uh right. what but no we want to make sure that we value uh value the man's time and, and say thank you um for for being in here okay so we got somebody going hammer right now yo shazam <laughs> man chill yo answer my question answer it, answer chill. it. <laughs> i'll answer it I'll, I'll answer it i'll answer it real quick you, um, you can go ahead yeah, go ahead but I just put you in timeout for 300 seconds. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> we can see. I can see. But go ahead and answer the question. Um, yeah. Um, I am personally recording, producing, mixing, mastering all in FL Studio to give you a short answer. Same here. <laughs> yeah. Now let us now let me type that out in a comment, and I'm going to paste it 15, 15 times, times in a times. row. It has to be at least 15 <laughs> times or it's not real. Uh, yeah, man. We, we You know, so... And it's not like it's like a thousand people in here. We got, we can see, we'll see it. So you're good. No, no, we, we, everything, I, I, you'd be surprised. And maybe you won't be surprised if you're an older producer, if you're, you're, you've been doing this for a while, you, you'll figure out the most beautiful answers to your complex questions are 99% of the time, simple answers. Yeah. That's simple. why you hear me a lot of times giving like simple answers that, you know, you might not want to hear, but that's, it's the truth. A lot of the time it's, it's really that simple. It's what you thought, you know what I mean? But that's good. That's, those are the questions that there's no such thing as a dumb, a dumb question at all, you know, because I felt like that in the past where you, you, you want to ask this question, you hold back because you think it's dumb or it's stupid. There's no dumb question. Sometimes it just has a simple answer. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times it has a simple answer and you kind of just need to hear it from somebody else to reassure it. Um, what you were thinking already sometimes and maybe you weren't sure because you can get in your own head and you'd be like I, I think it's this but it sounds too simple too good to be true right and you kind of just need to hear that reassurance that's why myself and Curtis King are doing these live streams and these Q&A's today and Thursday um, Thursday is going to be fire I can't wait yeah uh, somebody just asked a question I think that's really important to Thursday and we'll end on this note Sorry to bug, but what time on Thursday? Oh no, you're not bugging. You you only give us the answer the question one time. You're good. Uh, <laughs> what time on Thursday? Because I work. Want to know if I can make it? If you cannot make it, because we don't have a determ we don't have a, a a solid time right now. If you can't make it, don't worry. When you get the email, and uh, you become a part of this, 
I'll leave a form open because I'm going to send you an email before we actually go live that gives you a time. If you have a specific question, just shoot it to us. In any event, thank God for people like you, first of all. i gotta, gotta got to give a round of applause to your essential workers because you must be an essential worker if you're going to be working during that time. Um, but if you're not able to make it, don't worry. Two things. We're recording it, so you'll be able to re-watch re it. And two, if you ask a question via um, email, I'll add it to a notepad, and then I'll, I'll ask it as one of the first questions uh, in there. But we would much rather, if you can make it, for you to be there, just to be fair to people that are already in in the spot to be. Yeah. It's going to be dope. Dope, dope, dope. Yeah. Um, I, I see some. I see Damon X and some folks got some B battle questions. I'm trying to. I'm trying to transition right now, and I'm, I'm trying to. I'm trying to. <laughs> I, I will answer those questions on my own with y'all. But right now, it's all about this course. Uh, and got to get back to the business at hand. But I appreciate y'all so much, Larry. Oh, is anything else you want to leave it a few people with before we bounce up out of here? Um, not much. Just uh, you get me. You get me. <laughs> that's it <laughs> oh man there it is was well, a pleasure being here with you thank y'all for asking these great questions uh save your questions for future streams and then uh we'll do our best to get to them we got through a lot of them but if we didn't get to yours our apologies join us thursday though Throw, join us thursday there our time is there for you so uh we hope to see you there until the next time my friends y'all have a good one if i'm just playing <laughs> but i'll take your you tag get if you get me <laughs> <laughs> All right, then, y'all. Y'all take it easy. Throw the layup. <laughs> Peace. All right, bro. All right. I'm just Later, guys. Thanks for all your questions. You see me in the